Hi, it's Dr. Centeno, and I'd like to go over maximizing stem cell yield from a bone marrow aspirate. You know, there's a lot of misconceptions out there and urban myths about this. And even though many times my focus is both patient and physician, this one's a little bit more directed towards physicians who may have learned some incorrect things about how to perform this procedure. Over the last decade, we've done about 3,500 bone marrow aspirations and tested a lot of different techniques to increase yield. So we've learned quite a bit. This lecture primarily covers how to get the most stem cells out of a bone marrow aspirate. What it doesn't cover is how to perform a bone marrow aspirate, how to use imaging guidance, which should be the standard of care, how to keep the patient comfortable, or how to process the BMA to get the most stem cells once you have done the best BMA possible. So bone marrow contains lots of great cells that can help with orthopedic injuries. But really, most of the research that's been published to date has been on how to maximize the mesenchymal stem cell yield. So that's where we'll focus as well. As far as locations to draw from, the iliac crest yields about twice as many MSCs over the tibia. So we're going to focus on the PSIS area of the iliac crest. Again, focusing on the back of the hip area at the PSIS. And if you notice, the PSIS has a thick and thin area. The thick area is not all that big, frankly. So it's a little bit fascinating to see things like trocars with side ports and fancy trocars that presume to sort of drive through the marrow and pick up more cells when there isn't a lot of space to begin with. If we look at different strategies, we have to look at them in the context of where the mesenchymal stem cells live. And as you can see here, they live in the subcortical bone and around blood vessels. So there are really two opportunities to dislodge marrow MSCs during a BMA. One is going after subcortical MSCs that live below the cortex or on the back part of the bone, if you will, and or perivascular MSCs, which live inside the tissue itself. So there's a subcortical opportunity and a perivascular opportunity. So every time you enter the cortex and every time you drive any depth and draw, you're dislodging cortical and perivascular MSCs. Now, there really isn't very far to go. Again, here we're talking about a relatively small space. So let's look at some draw techniques. Let's look at the amount of volume you should take versus the amount of sites you should cannulate the syringe size, whether or not there are cannibalization effects, the trocar type, and in general, we'll draw some conclusions from all of that. So one of the most frustrating things to see is that many of the courses given by bedside machine manufacturers seem to get this part very wrong. I've seen a lot of doctors who have been taught that they should draw a high volume of bone marrow aspirate at one or maybe two sites. Now this is a lot easier for the physician, but it, we've known since 1990 that this reduces mesenchymal stem cell content and quite a few papers have been published on this. In fact, if you go the opposite direction, drawing more sites at lower volumes, that increases yield. And this is some unpublished data from our company that basically says the same thing, that going up to 10 mLs is pretty fine with regard to drawing a 
volume. You wouldn't want to go higher than that. And multiple sites at the same volume gives you more stem cells than a single site. So then you have to ask yourself, can drawing in smaller syringes help? Or does the syringe size matter at all? Well, Hernigal recently published a paper that seemed to suggest that when he compared 10 ml versus 50 ml syringes, that the 10 ml syringes performed better. Now, one of the concerns we have with this study is we don't know anyone who uses 50 ml syringes. They're really unruly uh, beasts to handle. So we tried this going the opposite direction, looking at 5 mLs versus 30 mLs in about the same number of patients, and we couldn't see a difference. So bottom line is, use a 10, use a 30. It's probably not a big deal. Don't use a 50. Here's another question. Does one site cannibalize the next? So for example, if you draw from one site and then you move over two centimeters and draw from a second, did the first site that you drew from take cells from the second? We actually did this experiment. Uh, this is actually our unpublished data. You can see there, I have sort of the syringe icons there at site one, two, three, and four. We took five mLs from site one, and then five mLs more from site one, five mLs from site two, then five mLs more from site two, and so on. You can see that 19.1 up there at site one seems to uh, produce the highest number of cells per cc. So the first five mLs from the first site produces the most cells. Then by the time you get to the second 5 mLs, you're still getting a reasonable number of cells. If we go on to the next site, site number 2, that's 16.8 there. You're seeing, again, the first site produces more than the, uh, the first 5 mLs from the second site produces more than the second 5 mLs. That's the 14.6 again. But it's producing less than the first site. And then the third site, you're not seeing much cannibalization, and some by the fourth site. So in conclusion on that data, the first 5 mLs of the first site yields the most cells. And in general, the first 5 mLs from any site seems to yield more than the second 5 mLs. And the drop-off and cannibalization is not really that much. So that's very good news for the concept of trying to draw multiple sites. So if we look at volume versus sites, the conclusion is three to five sites per side, six to 10 total sites, and draw 10 to 15 mLs max per site. As far as different kinds of fancy trocars, uh, we've seen these side port trocars. You know, it kind of looks like a fancy car. It's got nice little side ports on it. In 2008, there was a study that showed this didn't help. It would make sense that it doesn't really help given the size of the space that we're dealing with. So there's really no need to spend more than 20 bucks on a trocar. I've also seen other fancy trocar types. You have to be a little careful here uh, some of these trocars cars can go for up to $600, some of the very fancy new models coming out. And at the end of the day, whatever data they have is ba are based on tiny, small studies. And th those studies generally aren't compared to doing a proper BMA, which is multiple sites at small volumes. How about these techniques? These are two that I've seen taught quite a bit diving into the marrow and pulling small volumes as you travel, or what I call the deep dive, or the stick shift. You kind of change angles uh, and go through the same cortical area. Well, there's really no data on any of this that I could find that shows that any of these improve yield. So let's look at the face validity of these techniques. In the marrow deep dive technique, you're generally picking an angle that allows you to travel some distance within the thick part of the bone marrow. Now, at first, 
blush, this might make some sense. Maybe if you just go in there, draw a little bit, go a little further, draw a little bit, go a little further, draw a little bit, that'll knock off more perivascular MSCs and you might end up with a higher yield. We tested this and regrettably, it didn't really give us a higher yield. So the question would be why? If you look at the analysis of this, the physicians that generally use this technique only go in through one spot and then they drive and they, they take as they go. So regrettably, you're only going to one through one cortex site. So while you might be picking up more perivascular MSCs, you're mix, missing all the subcortical MSCs of the guy that's going in to multiple sites. Every time he punctures the bone, he's picking up likely more subcortical MSCs than you are by driving through the bone. So at the end of the day, there's a good reason why this technique doesn't outperform just going to multiple sites. On the stick shift technique analysis, what's really interesting is that you have a long lever arm here. So you are diving into the, or going into the bone in one cortical site, you're kind of backing up and then redirecting, backing up and redirecting at a different angle. So multiple short passes at different angles to the same cortical puncture site. And if you look at this, it doesn't really make much sense. Uh, you have to make big angle changes at the skin to make tiny little angle changes within this area. So you're really not maximizing subcortical nor perivascular MSC collection. That should say perivascular there. So the bottom line on Bomer aspirate technique is we've tested lots of different things. One of the techniques I didn't talk about is we even tried to place an 18 gauge needle through the trocar to disrupt more tissue, didn't help. We've done the deep dive while periodically aspirating. We've looked at multi-site versus volume. We looked at syringe size. And the bottom line is none of it really makes a big difference when, once you get to larger ends. Certainly it doesn't outperform just going to multiple sites and taking smaller volumes. So again, there's likely no advantage to spending more than 20 bucks for a trocar as maximizing yield is about time and technique, not about a fancy tool. So thanks so much for watching. Uh, I really appreciate, appreciate your time and uh, hope this uh, helped clarify some things.